Well, welcome to this panel on sustainable innovation for a circular economy, the implementation challenge. Now, let's admit it, circular economy is the latest sexy thing. Everyone talks about it. I remember the last time I organized an event on circular economy in Brussels. The same day in Brussels, there were other four events on circular economy. So you could uh, ask yourself the question, what will be different in, in this session? I tell you what's the difference. I'm very pleased that in this panel, we have uh, four, four, uh, three cities uh, present. We have Amsterdam, we have Tuane, we have uh, Cape Town, and we have uh, a representative, a colleague from uh, ECLA, from the ECLA African office, telling us also about the other cities. So it's really about today in the morning, we already talked about it, this, uh, this local level. Because as you know, if there is a problem at the local level with waste or climate change, the people, they go to the mayor and they want the answers. And I think that especially the local level uh, offer a lot of opportunities to solve certain issues, to overcome challenges. So I'm very glad to have uh, these speakers here. And sorry again for the uh, little uh, technology issue. And without further ado, I want to dive straight into, because uh, to cover up for some time, how are we going to approach this session? We have a bit less than one and a half hours. So the idea is that each speaker will uh, give a presentation. And afterwards, I will invite all speakers to come up the panel so that we have some questions and discussion and make this a bit interactive. That's it. So I would like to call on stage already my colleague Grace Steed from the ECLA Africa office to talk about the role of cooperation, city and regional networks in support of innovation for sustainable development. Now Grace, I'm happy that she's here because Grace is on one hand working for ECLA, International Network of Cities and uh, on sustainable development, but she's also from, she has her own business so it, it offers an interesting perspective. She, was, she started her career as a town planner in local government, set up her own company, and in terms of, uh, for ECLE, she has been involved in some major projects in, uh, on uh, urban sustainable development, and uh, has traveled and worked in different, within this project in already around 15 African countries. So I think you are definitely, have the experience here to, Tell us a bit about uh, what's going on in this field between innovation, circular economy in African cities. What do you see in terms of cooperation, challenge, and solution? Thank you for being here. I didn't know I'd been to 15 African countries. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, tricky situation that I'm in because um, ICLA Africa is an organization that represents local governments and works very closely with local governments. So we often talk about what the local governments are doing, but if you're being followed by the local governments speaking after you, you can't quite want to talk what they're talking about. So I have to talk about something different. So I thought, okay, I'm going to stand back and just have a little bit of a slightly different impression, realizing also that this is the Africa-Europe dialogue. I wanted to just say, okay, this is Africa. Reality being that a lot of the work that's happening in South Africa around sustainable public procurement and circular economy, a lot of it is happening in South Africa. Um, but let's just stand back for a moment and just look at what's happening. Sorry, there we go. So ICLA Africa, non-profit organization working um, across the world and ICLA Africa specifically focuses on Africa. And uh, we work with cities, um, connecting leaders, accelerating action and pioneering solutions. We are a member-based organization, and we've got project cities all over Africa, as you can see in this slide, uh, mainly sub-Sahara Africa, and focusing more on the Anglophone than the Francophone countries. But as I say, we work across Africa. So what is Africa, and what does that actually entail? I mean, did you know that Africa is larger than China, India, and America combined? Do you know that in Africa, f currently we have 15% of the world living here in Africa, and we anticipate that it's going to be 40% of the world's population by the end of the century. Let's just have a look at this Africa map. 
You can see here Nigeria, 141 billion, million people, Egypt, 78, Ethiopia, 70, and then Namibia and Botswana, which are actually quite big countries, are here represented very small based on their population. The question is, what is this population growth going to do to procurement issues, to economy? Let's just have a quick look at official languages around Africa. We've got French, Arabic, Portuguese, and English. But in Africa, the, it's the, con the continent where roughly a third of all the languages that are spoken in the world are spoken in Africa. Zooming in on that, that just gives you an idea of some of the local languages, which is why sometimes things get lost in translation. South Africa, by the way, we've got 11 official languages. Africa has got 100 million Facebook users, but unfortunately, the overall internet penetration is quite low. It's below 40%, as this map indicates the, the internet penetration for Africa compared to China, India, USA. And this is also reflected by our access to energy, as this photograph from NASA depicts. Um, still very much dark Africa. It is, however, the continent with the fastest percentage growing GDP. It's a continent that is being built as we speak. It's got enormous wealth. Oops, it went one too fast there. How do I go back? Sorry, I was in a rush. And enormous inequality. It's a photograph I took in Dar es Salaam. Ladies getting water from a burst pipe in the road. Africa is facing an urbanization tidal wave. If you look at Cairo, Lagos, Kinshasa, all of them growing rapidly. Can anybody tell me where this is? More specifically, that's an urban area there. So on the one hand, we've got Brazzaville, the capital of the Congo, and on the other side, we've got Kinshasa, the capital of the DRC. And these are two capitals across a the river from each other. Are we looking at a new megalopolis? I think this is the only place in the world where we can anticipate something to this nature. We're over four different countries, Ghana, Togo, Benin, and Nigeria. Um, these capital cities are growing so fast that they can in the future become technically one big city. Togo's already got 1.5 million, Ghana, three and a half. Nigeria, 21 million people. Compare that to Belgium with only 11 million. So Africa is really where cities are happening. This is really where there's growth happening, a lot of cities, um, and that is the reason why it's very important for us to look at this. But this is the African reality. This is the economy that we are dealing with. So how do we deal with this African reality? We need to start looking more and more at African innovation. Love this photograph taken in um, Dar es Salaam. The guy sitting on his bicycle backwards, and as he cycles, he actually uses the friction to sharpen knives. That's his little business that he's got on the side of the road there. The bicycle is mobile, by the way. And slowly, slowly, we're starting to see innovation around solar product and different, different technologies coming to the foreground, or just plain innovation. I've got to get my plantain to the other side of town, so I just pack it all in. This is the African reality that we're dealing with. Standing back and just looking at some of the implementation challenges around sustainable public procurement, I just want to highlight on a few points which we feel strongly about. The one is awareness and implementation around sustainable public procurement. It's still very quite low in um, Africa. It's not something that um, is, is, is really embraced. I think that um, in speaking to people, they quite often say, but we're not the big consumers. Europe and America, they're the consumers. Why must we look at our consumption? But the reality is if we can get it right in Africa, we can actually make such of a bigger impact over the long term. Certain government bodies do have policies around green procurement, 
But we also find that it's not really, really being implemented. There's very much a lack of integration. So one department might have a policy or something might be there, but it's not implemented across the board. We also find that prices are very much, price um, decisions are very much um, driven by price, by the cost. Or shall I say, is it the price and not the cost? Because we look at the rand value, but we don't look at the cost to the environment, the cost to our health, or the, 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 the long-term cost of a product. Quite often, not even considering full cost accounting or the energy efficiency or the basic efficiency benefits. Where they're starting to bring that in, definitely there are benefits. But quite often, we're finding that um, you also have your differentiation between your um, capital expenditure and your um, operational expenditure, and these two don't talk to each other. So I've got the money to spend on the building now, but I can't do that over the long term, so I need to try and also just see how do I reduce that. And then the wrong products get implemented in new buildings. And then capacity and priorities. Is this really a priority for African cities? They're needing to build new houses, they're needing to deliver on the ground, but they don't always see sustainable public procurement as the option. So it really takes a lot of capacity building so that they can start to understand the benefits behind the whole process. In South Africa, just to touch on this briefly, we've got, the, from a regulatory framework point of view, we've got the Constitution and the Public Finance Management Act that we need to comply with. And these core principles of fairness, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost-effective are included there. Unfortunately, it's not fairness towards the person who actually produces the product. It's fairness in the process of the, uh, the actual procurement process. Was that a fair process? Was the procurement process a transparent process? Not the transparency in where does this product actually come from and what is the actual environmental impacts of this product? What are the social impacts of this product? So competitive and cost effectiveness as well, it comes down to let's get the best price possible, not what is the most efficient option available. So the core principles seem to be quite nice, but when you start unpacking it, you're realizing, hold on, they're not really supporting what we're trying to achieve here. And then the preferential procurement policy framework has also made things a little bit more difficult in South Africa. Um, it's our also broad-based black economic empowerment. And because we've got such a strong focus on that, and in South Africa as a whole, we've gone through that whole wave of including that into everything that we're doing, it's very difficult coming with a new wave around environmental issues and to bring that up again. So that whole landscape needs to be taken into consideration. So what is driving innovation and what is ECLI doing around this? We work in different sectors and as I say, we work across Africa, not just in South Africa. And one of the projects that we're involved with is the City Food Network. Um, and that is also very much starting to look at where does food come from? How do we avoid the food waste? How do we actually deal with this? And, and trying to get those, those loops a lot shorter so that you can actually have a shorter supply chain. Another project looking more on the energy side and access to energy is the Global Covenant of Mayors, which is also being implemented across Africa. We've been working with Compact of Mayors, which is integrated into Global Covenant of Mayors, and that also looks at energy efficiency, access to energy, um, and um, also on the adaptation side of things. Other projects that ICLE is involved with as well, the City Innovation Platform. Here, for example, um, ICLE teamed up with different insurance agencies to try and understand what is the core of the, the issues that the insurance companies deal with versus the core issues that the municipality deals with. Because what happens is they get to a point, they do something, go so far, and then they try and get their insurance and then realize, hold on, but we used the wrong principles right from the start. So we try to team these up, the, um, the, the city up with the, um, the, the um, industry to try and get to the root of the matter and actually understand this better to make better decision making. Um, TAP is also just a, a platform for accessing some funding and the Carbon Climate Registry is a registry for cities also to report on what they're busy doing 
And this is an international platform that's used all across the world. Last thing I'm wanting to touch on here is that when we're looking at innovation, the way ICLEI works is we try and provide a framework, but then within that framework, we encourage the cities to unpack it in the way that works best for them. So we don't come with, a, with the answers, but typically, and this is our Green Climate Cities methodology, we have the basic principles of analyze it, commit, set your baseline, understand where you're coming from, take it further, act, look at how do you actually develop your strategy and implement it, and then look at accelerating um, that through upscaling and inspi inspiration. And for each of these different areas, we work with the cities to find the suitable solutions that are actually practical within their scenarios. And this is very important that while we provide the framework, we don't go in there not knowing anything, but all we provide is the framework and then the support and we work the journeys with these cities uh, to help them to understand what it is that they can actually do. Clara Do Vogo is the mayor of Monrovia. She's also a RECSCOM member for uh, ICLE Africa. And um, last week, two weeks ago at COP23, she was quoted saying, use the youth, use the women, because most of the time it's the women will say to the children and to the community, we are doing this and we'll get it done. And they do. So that's it from my side. Um, I'm also looking forward to hearing what the cities are doing, but I hope that that just gave you a little bit of an impression of what's happening in Africa in the broader sense. Thank you.